Hey boys and girls, it's me. And I'm here in the repair lair. And it's uh, it's been a little while since I made a video. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to uh, touch base with you and, and, and tell you that uh, in the past couple months I've been getting some interesting emails from newbies. And one that I'm finding that's been kind of repetitive is uh, about basically soldering. And uh, you know what kind of solder do I use, and you know what what's the technique I use, and and basically uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the technique I use to actually do my soldering of uh, putting wires together and things like that. Um, everybody has their own technique, but this is a technique I, I I've been using now for probably I'm going to say close to 20 years now, and uh, seems to work well, and uh, it's not that hard to do. So uh, hey, let's get started. Okay, there's basically two types of soldering that I do, and what I usually do most of the time is uh, I'll find a chassis similar to the Zenith uh, shutter dial chassis that I'm working on from somewhere right now. As you can see, basically everything is point-to-point -point wiring. Okay, and what, I'm, what I'm, my objective is right now is I've been, you can see I've already replaced a bunch of capacitors, and then there's still quite a few originals in here which I'm going to replace as well and then I'll start checking out all the resistors and go through them as well so what I want to do is to show you how I would change a point-to-point -point wiring here let's take this uh, this one's up kind of high right here let's see what is that that's a 0.01 microfarad capacitor now what I used to do as a kid if I was going to replace something like that I would go right to the, like for example, this wire here. Let me get a pointer. Get my finger out of there. <laughs> and there it is. So what this this wire is going down to this point on this, this tube socket right here. What I would do is I would heat this guy up and try to rem carefully remove the wire from this, this terminal on this socket right here. And, and that's okay, but you know, sometimes it's, it, it kind of gets a little tricky trying to get that off. And uh, what I learned about a long time ago from uh, when I, right after I joined the New Jersey Antique Radio Club is from our club guru. It says, I don't know why you do that because you could risk messing up the, the socket. And then you have to worry about replacing the whole socket as well. Uh, basically, when, when these things were put together, and they were on the assembly line, they were put together quite well. Most of the, the assemblers were women, and they did a rather nice, neat job and soldered very well. So what we're going to do is, is that rather than take, and that's what I used to do, I don't do that anymore. What, what I do now is, where the wire is actually connected to this terminal on the socket, I'm going to go back about a quarter of an inch or so here. I'll make it bend it with this stick a little bit. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to leave about eh, between 3 sixteenths and a quarter inch of wire on there. Here, let me get that. And I'll just clip it with a pair of wire cutters. And now you can see it's been separated. And I'm going to do that to the other side as well. And after I do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this wire and the wire that's going to be left here, and we're going to put the new capacitor on that. Okay, so now I have the capacitor out, so we have a wire, a little bit of wire sticking out here, and another one here. Now, one thing I, I always like to do, and uh, if you've ever watched a plumber solder cotter, co solder copper, oh, say that ten times, say that ten times fast, right? Um, what they usually do is they usually have a piece of sandpaper, a wall of sandpaper, and they clean the copper before they sweat the joints and add solder, all right? So they clean it up real good. And what I like to do is I usually like to have a knife or something like that and go over the edge and clean it up and make it shiny. And what that does is it helps the solder stick together better. Let me move over here a little bit. It's hard to get everything in here. Okay, now if you have you can't get one of these in there. You can always use a knife blade here too, and I just use this for tight areas. Just be careful not to cut yourself. Alright, what I'm doing is I'm just going over it 
with the knife blade itself so that once I hit it with the solder I know that my solder is going to stick and make a good contact and that's really important especially on a radio like this where you've got this particular ray, I forgot how many tubes are in this thing, I think there's 11 tubes in this so want everything to work really really well okay now here is my replacement capacitor, this is a 0.01 630 volt polyester cap I'm going to do the same thing on here even though it's all brand new and the wire is kind of shiny I'll take the knife blade and go over the wire anyway and that way I know that both surfaces will be good and make a good contact and stick and all that when I gotta put it on there so now this is ready to go and be soldered in alright now I've got this new part I'm gonna install and uh, it's got some really really nice long leads on it and here I'm going to hold it like this so you can see so you can see that basically the leads are very much very long compared to the, the length of the wire that's going to be on there okay so how, how am I going to fasten these guys on there if you remember back in the 70s here I'll move the camera over here to see a little bit better they just have a way of connecting stuff with outsider called wire round and they had a special tool that made little loops on here so what I like to do is I'm going to take a really good pair of needle nose pliers like I have here now these are these are craftsmen's that I bought probably about five years ago and I paid like ten bucks just for this pair of pliers but they're very very good and what I do is I'm going to take the skinny part and clip onto here and I'm going to twist it and what I want to do is I want to make at least a loop and a half if not two loops on here okay just like that alright and then I'll just clip off the excess here alright and what I'll do is I'll slide that loop over one of the wires that we left sticking out from the, uh, the tube socket I'll put this on and then I'll measure up the other side I'll eyeball it and then I'll make make some loops on this side as well and put this on the other side okay I've got it on here I just have it looped on there one thing I also like to do is and I've got it looped over both of the little pigtails that I cut off here another thing I like to do too is I when I get it on, on and in place I like to have the value facing out so that uh, in case you ever have to go in here again you can see what value cap that is that uh, got replaced there alright so the next step is now we're actually going to do the soldering now um, there's two different here let me take my camera I use my little Weller soldering station and it's got the little uh, thing on here I could actually adjust the heat which is kind of nice. I, I, I like working with this but only because that I could adjust it. I could turn the heat down if I'm doing uh, if, I, if I'm working on uh, surface mount stuff I don't need a lot of heat but I could turn it up while I'm working on old radios and then as a backup too I even have this is uh, probably not a good iron for uh, doing point to point but this is good for doing surface mount stuff. This is a Weller 25 watt which is not very hot so I, I use that when I'm doing some surface mount stuff sometimes so if you're working on this you want to make sure you got something good and hot so uh, let me go ahead and uh, turn this on I'm going to do the connection onto the right here first and what I like to do is I like to touch touch the pigtail and the little uh, wire wrap coil that I made on the new capacitor let it sit there for about five seconds or so at least and now I'll just go in here and what I'm doing is I have the heat on there with the tip I actually have a little bit too much on there now I, know I have to turn this off because I can't zoom but that looks like a really good connection right there okay so there's the first connection 
Okay, you probably see it a little bit better now. Now let me move over to the other side. And do the same thing. I'm going to put the soldering iron there. Let it sit for a couple seconds. Let things heat up a little bit. We made the connections all nice and clean. And we're going to take the solder and just kind of work it in there a little bit. And that should be a good connection right there. Okay. I put a little... Uh, little insulation on this side just a little bit just in case and that should be good okay so there it is now that point on one uh, cap is in place and another thing you want to do too is if you're not used to doing this you take some needle take that pair of needle nose and maybe tug on a little bit not real hard but that'd be a good uh, way to find out if you got a good connection as well. So uh, there's point to point soldering how I do it. Every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven.